On November 16, 2017, celebrity bodyguard George Young was shot on his front porch as he returned home from work. His keys were still in the front door as he died on the steps. Detectives questioned George's wife Tia and family friend Harvey Tim Lee. Both swore they had no idea who could have had motive to kill George. When police discover that Young and Lee had been having a secret affair for over a year, they bring them in for a formal interview. Hey, you wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold in this one. It is. It's burning up right there. So how have things been? Stressful. A lot of a lot of stress and just a lot of grief. A lot of financial issues. Um, we're struggling. We're making it with my mom's self. Um, some helps and what I have for social security for my work. Okay. You said Tim's mom helps or your mom helps? My mom. Oh, okay. <laughs> my mom. Okay. So, like I said, the reason I brought you back in here today is I have follow-up questions. I kind of want to go over it again uh, because that's just at the point that we're at now. There's been a couple months. Sometimes bringing people back in and going around with the story helps us find if there was something we didn't remember the first time. Uh, the thing is, with it, the first time we talked and then you came up here and then we talked to you at the house, and I understand that there were some issues with that. It had gotten pretty confrontational, I guess, the way that some people had talked to you, right, at the house? Yes, very. Okay. Um one of the one of the things is that we when we bring people in over and over, obviously I know that because of the things we were going, because of the suspected relationship between you and him, because of all of those things you were listed, you know, as a suspect, but you, you knew that, right? I found okay. out the yeah. Okay. You found out through where? Uh, I was with my mom. They sent me. Oh, they sent okay. me a letter every month. Oh, okay. Um so because of that, like I said, I want to go over this with you again today and ask you this, but because we already kind of come at you hard and talk to you and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I just did the same thing with Tim in there. I have to talk to you. Um, is that I'm going to have to read your rights. Okay. You know, I don't have a warrant for you right now or anything like that, but to continue talking because it's the fourth time I've talked to you, I have to read it to you. Okay. okay. Um, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you are being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. If you decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements, or you can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statement. Does that make sense? You understand that? Yeah. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So I was talking to him and he said that you still weren't, you still hadn't found a job, right? Okay. How's that been? Um, I just not gotten any calls. Okay. For anybody. Are you just applying for like medical positions or? Um, mostly doctor's office and hospital. Okay. I've had a few coworkers trying to help me get on um, at their facility, but the fact that I was terminated um, in September, that doesn't help. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to check the records. Okay. Did they not give you the option to resign or did they terminate you before you ever no, go? No, I wouldn't even. I, they terminated me on my day off. Oh, yeah. By phone. By phone? They called you or they texted you? They called me. I was about to say, if they text you, that's pretty. How are the kids doing? My older two um, are doing fine. They seem to kind of go on through life like nothing has ever happened. They don't talk to me much about it. Mm -hmm. I have to try to talk to them, and it's like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. um, they told me a few weeks ago it's just easier for them to act like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. uh, my oldest one doesn't even like to see mail or anything with George's name on it. Mm -hmm. um, he's asking to please keep stuff out of out of sight range. It doesn't bother my middle one to see stuff, but mm -hmm. it does really bother the oldest one. Um, the baby boy is having the hardest time. I mm -hmm. don't know if it's because of his age or what, mm -hmm. but me and him are grieving, I think, the hardest. The older okay. two seem to just, my oldest one is in school, plays sports, works, so he's hardly ever home. He tries to stay extremely busy. Mm -hmm. So, I guess he says when he's sitting idle, that's when his mind just kind of goes all over the place. Okay. And the oldest one, is that Dylan? Mm -hmm. And is he working? Yeah. Okay. Food court, Mama Georgia. Okay. 
Which restaurant does he work at? Uh, Charlie's Cheesecakes. Charlie's Cheesecakes. I don't think I've ever been there. Mm. Yeah. Um, how's your mom doing? Mm, she has her good weeks and bad. The first couple of months was awful for her. Mm-hmm. Um, now she has about two or three bad days a week. Okay. But she tries to be strong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's what moms do. That's yeah. What I've been trying to do for mom. Yeah. Um, has the car situation gotten any better or using your mom's? I know you had several cars and there was problems with most of them. Is um, that kind of? Yeah, the link in the, tri- the trend, um, engine lights bit on. Mm-hmm. It's broke down several times. BMW, what my son drives, has been in the shop mm-hmm. to, to at least twice in the past couple of months. Okay. Your mom still drives her car? Mm-hmm. Okay. Does Tim still have the. Is it, Titan? Titan, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so what I want to do today is just kind of walk back through what you can remember. Sometimes over time, people remember things that they didn't remember the first time. Um, I'll help kind of jog your memories or go with the things that you told me. Maybe you told me something you didn't remember the first time, okay? Um, so just start out that night. I know that you said you had gone or you were in bed. Um, were you like in a deep sleep or were you just kind of sleeping or what was going on? Um, as far as I remember, I was in a deep sleep. Okay. And then what happened? Uh, I heard two loud noises. I wasn't sure if it was firecrackers or what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, I sat up on my bed, looked around. My baby boy was still asleep. Um, if I remember correct, I think I went to Tim's room, but he wasn't there. His light was on. Mm-hmm. Then I remember he was downstairs on the computer or a laptop mm-hmm. at the table. Um, I don't think I went to my mom's room right away. I think I went downstairs to where he was. Um, and I think as I got almost down to the bottom step, he was coming up. Mm-hmm. He asked me, did I hear it? I said, yeah, I heard it. He said, it sounded like shots. I said, I'm not sure if it was shots or firecrackers or what it was. Because mm-hmm. some people in our neighborhood that I knew, uh, they periodically do firecrackers for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, I think at that point he said, I think he said he was going to go get his gun, mm-hmm. go up to his room, go down and check, see. I remember him opening the door, um, shutting it pretty quick, mm-hmm. telling me to call 911. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why he told you that it was that George. George was down there. Okay. And I called 911. The lady um, goes through the whole thing. What's your emergency? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I told her um, that my husband was, well, we heard gunshots, and my brother opened the door and said that. It was my husband. She okay. wanted to know, I think, where the shots were is what she needed to know. And, yeah, she, that's the first thing she asked. I told her I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it down there. Um, so she said, is there anybody can look that can? I said, my brother. So he looked, told mm-hmm. me what he thought he saw. So I related to her. And then she wanted me to do CPR. Mm-hmm. I don't know CPR, first of all. And if I did, I don't think I'd have been able to gather myself to do it. I don't know. I may could have, but I don't yeah. think so. Okay. So she asked me, is there anybody that could? I asked Tim, could he do it? He said, yeah. At some point, I remember throwing my phone down so mm-hmm. he could talk to the operator. Um, and then at some point, I don't remember. At some point, I went and got my mom. She wasn't asleep. I thought she mm-hmm. was. She was in the room with the TV up loud. Okay. So you were sleeping. You heard these shots. You come down. Tim's sitting at the table. You ask him if he heard that. He's like, yeah, he heard that. Did he go check out the door first, or did he go get his gun first? If I remember right, I thought he went upstairs to get his okay. gun first, but I didn't actually watch him go in there and get it. Okay. I think I remember, I think I remember him going up the steps, heading to his room, but I can't swear to it. Okay, and you were on the platform? Catwalk. catwalk. Oh, you were upstairs on the well, catwalk thing? B- yeah, by the time he oh, went okay. down to check on George, that's okay. where I was there. So he goes outside, and he opens the door, he sees his George, and I know at some point he put his gun up. Why did he do that? Uh, in, I don't know. I don't know if it was okay. after. I don't know if it was after emergency people got. I don't know. I really can't be honest. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. Um. So he goes outside. At some point, he puts his gun up. He sees George, and he tells you, um, it's George and whatnot. And then is that when he tells you to call nine one one, or did you? Did you ever go down to the door or no? No, I didn't go okay. no. I didn't okay. to the door. Okay. I stood up at the top where you could see everything. Okay. All um, I could see was like his feet and legs on the floor. Okay. Um, 
And when you went and woke your mom up, you what did you tell her? She wasn't asleep. When I or when up, you went? Yeah, yeah, I just said something bad has happened to George. Mommy, something bad has happened to George. And of course, she sat straight up, what do you mean? Or what are you talking about? And I said, Mommy, George has been shot. And she said, no, no, no. I think she might have asked me first, is it a crash? Did he have a wreck or what? Because she knew he was working at night with Rob. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, no. And by then, I think I was breaking out. And I said, Mommy, George was shot. And she said, where is he at the Lennox thing? I said, no, he's at the front door. You know, and of course, I wasn't that calm, but she couldn't hardly digest it. So we walked out of the room. She stood with me on the little balcony thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling her, I'm walking her basically through, through what I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. Um, she stayed fairly calm. I think she was in shock, just like I was. Um, but she could see Tim down there. You know, like I said, you can see his George's legs and feet. From that angle, but that's all you could see. Okay. Um, we could tell Tim was on his knees. Um, I don't know. We just, I don't know. I think we just both st- just stood there in shock. Yeah. She, I think she was standing next to me whenever I threw my phone down, I think, but I can't remember. Okay. I know at one point I had to throw my phone down for now and wanted to talk to him about okay. the CPR. Do you ever remember him leaving? Um, leaving the, the area right there was George to go anywhere else out in the yard or anything like that? Not that I remember, but I do know at one point I did go pee in my bathroom. Okay. So, but where right. that fell into it, I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Okay. Um, all right. Have you um, talked to, have you talked to Willie or any of those people from Ackerman since? Um, the last time I talked to Willie was, was it the day of the funeral? I think the day of the funeral I haven't talked okay. to Okay. All right. I was a little disappointed. They yeah. They didn't reach out hardly at all. Okay. I remember they said something about um, uh, a donation or a fund or something like that. We had talked when we first talked to David. Yeah, anything about they that? They never did do one. Okay. They didn't. I, I, they, they may have sent a flower, but I never even saw a flower. Okay. I saw some things from Salvation Army, which he did a lot of work for. Macy's with Rob sent flowers. Ackerman, to my knowledge, the only thing they did was 150 of which was, and we paid for another 150 for them. Okay. But they contributed 100, I think it was 150. Okay. But that was it. Um, what do you remember about, um, or I mean, Rob, when did, when's the last time you talked to Rob? Have you, have you been talking um, to him? I, he called me two weeks ago. I text him once or twice a week since he had a certain heart surgery. Um, he verbally called me, I think, two weeks ago. It's the first time I actually heard his voice, mm-hmm. just to tell me he was okay. Um, he left. Well, we talked, and then I think last week he left me over this email. Okay. But we text about once a week. Okay. Um, what about Ivy and her mom? Have you talked to them? I don't talk to Ivy at all. I talk to the mom once, usually once or twice a week. Okay. His mom is the only person in his family that I deal with. Okay. How's she been? It's good. I mean, it's, you know, as good yeah. as can be, but yeah, she's the only one that talks to me. Checks on the kids and she calls my mom usually twice a week. Okay. I think when I was talking to Tim, he had said that, because I kind of talked about how everybody just seemed so shocked that he was living there and nobody wanted to believe that Tim had been living in the house for long. And I guess, is it Marjorie? Is that his mom's name? George. Kind of, yeah, Marjorie. stood up for she Tim did. and said, no, I, I knew that yeah, he had been living there. I didn't there. know. She told him, I think, two or three months before. Okay. That didn't come out till a few days after he died. She actually brought up that she knew it. Okay. He told her. What, what is your opinion? Why do you think George kept that from everybody? Because that seems to be a huge issue for everybody. I think because understand. George is very private. Very, very private. Mm-hmm. Um, I know at one point he did state early in the game. He didn't never sit down with me and the kid and say, don't tell nobody. Mm-hmm. But he did mention that he wasn't going to mention it to Rob or anyone right then because he said he didn't want to embarrass Tim or make it look like this man can't even afford to have a place to lay his head. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like a family discussion. Nobody better not tell that he lives here, nothing like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Like I said, I thought Rob knew after, well, February made two years that Tim was here. So I guess when George died, it was what, 18 months or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I just assumed Rob knew. I thought at some point George probably told him. I mm-hmm. never knew that he didn't tell him. I didn't know until that night that Rob flipped out and was just like, I didn't know he stayed here. Mm-hmm. Um, I never knew that he didn't tell his family until they cut up when they got there. Um, but we, like I said, we've had people live with us before, not in this house. Um, me and George have taken in. I think Tim is the fourth person, not counting my mom. Mm-hmm. When we were married a year, a little less than a year, we lived in Myrtle Beach on one bedroom apartment. A girlfriend of mine got put out, her and her baby. We took her in. She stayed six months. 
slept on the couch in the living room. After her, I think a year later, another girlfriend with her two children stayed with us. Um, so we've taken in, that's just, I mean, we hear people in need, but that's just what we've always done. Okay. I think the longest we've had anybody stay is 10, but the two females, and I'm talking about a row of each, one I think was six months and one was nine. And that was in a one bedroom apartment. Okay. Um, so you've talked to Rob. Um, but about the case, nothing about the case, because okay. he made it clear before his surgery he had to remove himself from mm -hmm. any stress dealing with this, any stress from his business. He's got even Ray, I think Ray, his partner, is taking care of the business until I think he's recovering for 10 to 12 weeks. So okay. that's when he told me, look, I know you don't like dealing with the detectives. I know you're trying to stay out of it because of what went down, but mm -hmm. you're going to have to step up because I can't mm -hmm. do it. I can't risk my health, my recovery. And I mean, I'm not heartless, so I understood it. And that's when I started reaching out. But until mm -hmm. then, I just didn't because I will say you to me were never nasty to me. Mm -hmm. like, I felt like you were doing your job. Mm -hmm. The other ones probably were doing their job too. But the way the black gentleman talked to me in my yard that night, they followed us home from here. Mm -hmm. um, the way he talked to me, that's probably part of the job too. I don't know. But for somebody to stand in my face and tell me that, you know, I've been doing this blah, blah, many years. I don't remember how many you said. Mm -hmm. 20, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, and I can look at you and I tell you, foolish, you're a liar. Mm -hmm. That did something to me because I was going through enough as it is, but for you to talk to me like that in my yard and it was people on the porch, like, that's part of what sparked this beef with me and my husband's family. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the way, to me, the way the lady, the female talked to me in the car when it was with me and you, and mm -hmm. I think it was when she came back in the house and got me. I just was to the point, I told Rob, you can deal with them. I'm not dealing with them. They don't, they made it clear. They don't believe word that I say. Mm -hmm. They think everything I say is a lie, so there's no need for me to talk to them. If you want to deal with them, you deal with them. Mm -hmm. Until then, if they don't contact me, I'm not contacting them. Mm -hmm. And so that's when Rob said, well, I don't mind. You know, I will do that. I'll be kind of the correspondent between the two. Mm -hmm. But when he had to step out, he had to respond. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. David, have you talked to David much at all? I mean, I don't know what your relationship no, was with him. I've only met David at the funeral, well, he came to the house, I think, a couple of days before, you know, before the funeral, um, brought some food. I think he brought food. Um, I saw him at the funeral, and I think I've seen him once since. But I don't really know him. I know him, I know him if I see him. I see him. We don't talk on the phone or anything like that. Text, none of that. Okay. So he's still working with Tim, though, right? They're working for some yeah, other... Yeah, some other guy. Okay. Um... So, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, obviously, is I talked to Tim, and one of, one of the things that, you know, I'll just be honest with you, in the beginning, issues with him is, you know, we had talked to you, and you you had told us what you had told us, and there was, you know, I won't say there was much to that, but um, Tim just seemed, you know, there was a lot more confrontation going on with him during the first interview, and talking to him the day that you guys came up there. Um, because of that whole tracker thing, which you said you didn't know. Uh, yeah, so George there came to me about of, it, but like mm -hmm. I said, I never knew it was actually purchased and the whole night. But. Okay. So did you did you know the night that that happened before whatever was going on with you and Tim that he had gone and retrieved that off the car? No, not until you told me. Okay. I think it was in my house here on the 18th. But what did, what did you what did you what did you think about that? I mean, why? Well, would when he, you said it, I I was floored because, like yeah. I said, first of all, I didn't even realize the tracker was ever purchased. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when you told me that a neighbor or somebody saw him take it off, I found it really strange, and I even asked him about it later. And what did he I say? didn't ask him about it that night. Um, he said with what George had going on or whatever about, remember I'll tell you the guy who came to mm -hmm. he said he just didn't want, I guess George, I, I think he said he just didn't want George being exposed in a bad light or something like that. I don't know, something yeah. like that. But I haven't asked him anything about it since. Do you, did you feel like that was... And I just want your opinion on it, because I'll tell you how it looks to us. Do you think that was weird that in the moment that his friend is laying out on the front porch bleeding out, his first thought is to go to the car and pull that off instead of rendering aid to George? Yeah, I found that weird. And that was before the, he did CPR? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. I found that strange. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, I do. That's why yeah, I don't want to know. Yeah, we yeah. asked him, and he admitted that he went and did it, and he didn't have a good answer. He didn't really have an answer as to why. He said he didn't want you to find it or the family to find it, and they would know. But I said it's under the car. Who's going to look under the car? That's weird. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, 
Well, let me just ask you, do you think that there's, do you, have you ever felt that he was may have been involved in this in any way? I don't. I mean, I know that part of it doesn't add up at all. Um, but I personally, the only reason I don't, I'm not the only reason, but I just never seen any beef between the two of them um, at the house. Mm -hmm. I've never heard George, and me and George had a really good relationship as far as he would tell me about mm -hmm. stuff that went on or he got into it with somebody at Ackerman or it, whatever. Mm -hmm. But he never mentioned to me ever that they had a beef, disagreement. Like I said, even Tim had went to him several times about, you know, I can go ahead and leave now. You gave me six months. Mm -hmm. You know, you told me I'm six months. George came to me. You, you want him to go? Are you cool with it? I mean, it's a help to us because he's paying rent. Mm -hmm. You know, and then at the end of the year, George, he came to George again. Do you want me to go? And George came to me and was like, what do you think? Because I'm cool with him being here. I go out of town so much. I feel better with him. So it's like I never, George never let on that ever that he had a beef for us was threatened or scared of him or mm -hmm. I just never witnessed anything and the mm -hmm. kids haven't and as far as I know my mom has it so I just yeah. that that part doesn't make sense Do you why think he was jealous over the position that he wasn't making as much money as George I don't or? think it was that because he was making good like mm -hmm. George started I think at 23 an hour I think mm -hmm. I think it was 23 and his first raise was up to like 26 mm -hmm. so I don't think it was that and I know there's been several times George couldn't make payroll. He had to go to David and Tim and can I give you half or a thousand and you I pay you the rest of and they've always said yes, every time. Never know. He's never come back and told me, Oh my god, Tim is hot or David is pissed. Mm -hmm. And then he's borrowed money from Tim before. And Tim told him, pay me back when you can. He's fixed my car several times because George didn't have the money, neither did I. And he just told George, pay me when you can. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And to my knowledge, George has paid him back every time. Okay. Now, I know this last t time, um, I think the last time I got a fix was in October. That was a transmission. I think it was like over 2300 I don't think we finished that bet off yet. I think we got gave him maybe $1,300. Mm -hmm. But George was in the process between the two of us paying him back. Okay. But that's that's the only part I just, I don't know. It just I, If I had something to go on, something yeah. I've seen, it's just nothing. Okay. Um, <sighs> all right. Well... I'll, I'll kind of just go into what I have, okay? So after talking to him, and I've talked to David multiple times, and then I talked to Tim again today, okay? I'm, I tell you right now, I have a whole lot of stuff that points to Tim had something to do with it, okay? And I know him and David were good friends and some stuff was going on. I went over there and just talked to him now, um, and obviously you guys knew you were coming up here, and I wanted to follow up with him, but that's because I knew I was going to talk to him about the stuff that I had found, okay? Um, I'll say that conversation went pretty quickly, okay? There's not a whole lot that he was going to be able to deny, okay? So I'm telling you that the investigation shows that he had something to do with it. The interesting part, though, is that he implicated you in it. He said you guys were in a relationship and that you were the mastermind behind all of this and it was your idea because you wanted the million-dollar life insurance policy. Yes, cool. He could take over George's job. And you guys would be set to be together. That's and that was the, the whole deal. Well, I can tell you that's a lie. That's okay. a lie. So I, I want to hear from you the truth and what was really going on. Because if he's that's what he's telling me and I already know he's involved. You see how that makes it look? Yeah, but that's bull. I can okay. tell you that's bull. Okay. Well, tell me. I why. don't, first of all, like I said, I don't know that he's involved. I don't mm -hmm. know anything about what happened that night. No. Well, listen, I I'm, didn't even I'm, know the policy was any good until me and Rob called a couple days later. Okay. So... There's no, there, first of all, I'm used to struggling. Mm -hmm. Me and George have struggled our entire marriage financially. Mm -hmm. I don't, I would never t hurt or take anybody's life for no money. Mm -hmm. And like I said, first of all, I know at one point George had a million dollar one, a 450, and then I had a 250 on me. Mm -hmm. I knew he had at some point dropped mine. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he dropped the 450 until me and Rob started our calls and found out one was no good and the other one was. Mm -hmm. But him taking over the business, I know nothing about that. Okay. But that was never a discussion we had. One of the things that Ivy said was you told her that there was a million dollar policy way earlier last year. Who? Ivy. I, me and Ivy have never discussed an insurance okay. policy. Never. Now George told me at some point that Ivy knew about it. Him and her and Ivy, him and Ivy were very close, and she used to work for George remotely from Myrtle mm -hmm. Beach. She could log on and do work for him. Mm -hmm. So at one point, I don't know. I think it was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. He said that an email that I guess the insurance company sent him, Ivy saw it or I don't know she can access his I think she could access his massive email 
Mm-hmm. And so he told me, he said, now Ivy knows about the insurance, you know, policies that we have. But me and Ivy would have always been close. Mm-hmm. I was closer to her than any of the other ones. So even when he mentioned to me that she knew about it, I was cool with it. I mean, that's fine. We were co- co- up close. So I didn't, I didn't care that she knew. But like I said, I knew he had a policy, but I didn't know it was active because mm-hmm. I knew he had dropped one, I don't know, earlier last year. So I didn't know if any of them were any good. I didn't. Okay. So, no, no conversation ever went on about no, no insurance, him taking over no business, or none of that. That's the Okay. Um, I don't even know why he'd say that because that's never, that never happened. I guess, obviously, the concern is I'm telling you the thing with him is he got the tracker, um, he got it. He had tried to put some apps on George's phone before then, um, and he said George knew about those. I know for a fact George didn't know because I have his text messages where he explained to George that it was Xena, that Xena was trying to do that to him. But I know for a fact they only were signed up through his phone because I can tell that he did that. So he was trying to find ways to track George, and George didn't know it, which is why I have a hard time believing about him knowing that the tracker was going to be on the car because he, he didn't know about the other stuff on the phone because why would you explain to him Zena did it and explain it away if he knew that's what you were trying to do? You would just tell him, this is what I'm doing because when he downloaded those apps, mm-hmm. it sends a notification to the person you're trying to track. So George was like, why am I getting this notification you're trying to track my phone? And he said, oh, well, zena has been trying to track me, which is not true. Okay, yeah, this is new to me. Um, also, he was looking at that app for the tracker, which in his words is only supposed to be in case something was going to happen to him to find the truck, not him, which is weird that you're only worried about the car and not him. And yet he was looking at it from the day that he bought it on the 6th. He was looking at it every single night. And he was looking at it the night before George came home. You saw the night of the 16th? Mm-hmm. So, okay. So the tracker sends a message to his phone? I mean, I'm confused. Okay, so a couple of days prior to the murder, earlier in the month of November, he tried to download these apps on your phone, just like an iPhone app or a Samsung Android, I'm not sure how it works, where you can track somebody's phone. Well, when you do that, you're not allowed to do that without their permission. So when you put in that person's number that you want to track, it sends them a notification. I have it on George's phone where he got the notification and then asked, okay. Tim, why am I getting this? And he said, oh, Zena is trying to track me because of stuff going on with her. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry about it. But I know for a fact he signed up for it because it came to his email through his phone number that he signed up for it. He has to download the app on the phone. So you see what I'm saying? So George didn't know he was trying to track him. Otherwise, he would have been like, hey, I'm tracking you because we talked about this before. Remember? Oh, okay. I see. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Then he got that actual tracker and was using it, the one he put on the car. Okay. He was looking at that one on his phone. Okay. We had the app, and I can show every time he opened it. Every single night from the night that he bought it up until the night of the murder. And he was looking at it the night of the murder before George got home. So he knew when George was going to be home because he was watching him on the map. Okay, so. So did. And before so that, did somebody, he was, did some, he asked somebody, do I'm, I'm lost. That's what I'm asking you. I don't, I don't know. I have before no idea. Before that, he was researching all kinds of uh, poisonous things online. He researched black mamba venom, which is the most venomous snake in the world. You cannot buy the venom online like he was trying to over 27 times. That's how many times he looked it up to try to find. He tried to find the venom, then he tried to find breeders where he could buy the snakes himself, but you see how that looks? And then a week later, you buy a tracker to put on his car, and then I know that you're looking at it the night of the murder. And the first thing you did, instead of helping your friend, was run out to the car and take the tracker off? Who does that? You know what I'm saying? In front of a jury, when you look at that, say, what would a reasonable person do? No reasonable person would jump over a dead body or somebody who's dying to go pull something off a car. That would be the last of their worries. Right. So... That's my question to you. Now, the problem is, is that now he's bringing you into it. I have nothing to do with it and know nothing about it. That's what I'm saying. So we call, you called the insurance the very next day, right? The next day or two days later, I can't yeah. remember. So it was the next day. And you see how that looks, though? But my mom could tell you if you talked to her. She started bothering me that next morning. Mm-hmm. She said, Tia, you need to, do you have insurance? How are you going to do a funeral or anything? And I said, Mommy... 
And she can tell you if you call the right now before I can even reach her. I said, Mama, I can't deal with that now. I'll mm-hmm. worry about that later. I said, this is, I'm overwhelmed with what just happened. Mm-hmm. And so she kept saying that. And matter of fact, it was her and I'm not sure. It might have been even after George's mom and, and his Why did you want to call the insurance that soon, though, the very next day? That's what I'm saying. My mom is the one that kept telling me I needed to call. Okay. She kept, because she knew I didn't have a job. Mm-hmm. She said, how are you going to do a funeral if you don't know if he has a policy? Mm-hmm. And I said, Mama, I'll get to that in a couple of days. I'm not, I said, right now I'm overwhelmed with what just happened. Mm-hmm. This was that, he died on Thursday. This was like Friday. Mm-hmm. When she was, I had several, even several people, like friends asking me, you know, do you have insurance? Do we need to take up something for funeral? And I said, my mom keeps bugging me, but I haven't called yet. Mm-hmm. So then even Rob, when I talked to Rob, Rob said, do you know if Cuz had insurance? Mm-hmm. And I said, I don't know. Mommy keeps bugging me about calling. So that's when Rob said, well, let me look for the, uh, the policy with you. And we'll call together before I leave. Mm-hmm. So that wasn't my first reaction. Like I said, you can call my mom right now and she would tell you. Okay. She was the one egging me on that I needed to call because she was worried about funeral expenses. She knows she only gets 1300 a month. She knows I didn't have a job. So her big thing was, what are we going to do about a funeral with no money? But after I called, they said uh, they said it was, she said it was effective. She said, I'm going to email you the whatever, the papers I need to fill out. You can ask the lady. She emailed them, I think, to me on Friday. I didn't even print them off, I don't think, till like Saturday or Sunday. Mm-hmm. Mommy kept asking me, have you filled the things out? Have you printed them? If you even call the insurance company, I don't think I sent them the stuff till next week or a week and a half later. Because I wasn't in a rush because it's like I was too overwhelmed with everything that was going on. Mm-hmm. But yes, I made maybe three calls, I think, to Mutual of Omaha since then. Mm-hmm. I stopped calling. They told me about, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 weeks ago, Miss Young, whenever you're cleared or whatever, we will call, send an email, and mail you something in the mail. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to keep calling. And I haven't called them since, and it's probably been close to three months. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, I mean, I don't keep, it's, I just write it out of my head. And I've told numerous pe- people who have said, you know, did you get your life insurance? A lot of people don't know how much it is. Mm-hmm. But have you gotten your life insurance? I said, no, you know, it's, I'm you know, still in investigation. Um, I told them I haven't even called. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the other things is that we get these crime stoppers tips. Yes. And both of these right here have him listed on it that people want us to look into him. You see what I'm saying? So I see it's what just, you're saying. It's one thing after another. I see what you're saying, but um, I can tell you, I don't know nothing, nothing about it. Okay. I would never trade my husband's life ever for money. Mm-hmm. And I've made that comment to numerous of family members and friends, and I mean mm-hmm. it. I really mean it. Because that doesn't replace him or my kids having a father. Correct. Um, so why do you think that uh, Tim is going to be doing something like this? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. This is new to me. I don't, I don't, this, none, of, none of this makes any sense to me. So none of you it. guys were, so what is he, so what about the part where he says that you him have been in a relationship for a long time? We have not, we've been in a very close friendship. He's like, we started off like, I mean, it's like we're brothers. First of all, it was like he was a stranger when he first came because I haven't seen Tim probably in 15, 20 years since he was young. Um, the longer he was there, because he is very quiet, we became close. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, that I'm not understanding that either. I, I don't know. Um, one of the things I talked to Zena, his ex, and she said that she had found out through him that he was seeing somebody named Tia, and that he had been calling around, and he kept changing up which Tia it was. And then she called you one day when you and George were at a hotel or something like that and confronted you. Do you remember that? She didn't call me and George at no hotel. She called my job. She called my uh, the job, the hospital that I work at, mm-hmm. and asked me some questions. Of, she asked me, "Was I Tia?" Uh, she didn't ask Young. She said Tia. Uh, it was another last name. She asked me. I can't remember what the girl's name was. And I said, "No, but I'm Tia Young." Mm-hmm. And she said, "Do you know Tim?" I said, "Yeah, Tim. Tim lives with us." Mm-hmm. So she said, "Oh, so you're so you're." T-, she said, "So you're George's wife." I said, "Yes, I'm Tia Young." She said, do you know anything about a Tia, whatever the girl, anyway, the girl worked for DeKalb County. She was mm-hmm. a teacher or a band t- coach or something, I don't know. So she asked me some questions and do I know anything about Tim and messing with this girl named Tia who worked for DeKalb? I said, no. Okay. Do you know a Christy Lewis? I've heard of Christy. I think it's she? one of Tim's friends from Mississippi or Alabama. Okay. Because it looks like... 
I don't know. He was emailing her back and forth. Um, he said, I apologize for everything. I wish all this could stop, but I feel like I'm going to end up dead over all of this. Sorry for getting you involved. Yeah, I know. I never met her. I know he has a best friend. Best friend, close friend, and good stuff. Well, they've been Which talking more than that. Time. They've been talking romantically through, the, through the summer of last year. Oh, wow. There's another girl named Candy. Do you know Candy? I've heard of Candace. I think that's a girl. Well, he had a girlfriend named Candace. I think that he dated here, but then there's one from Myrtle Beach, I think. You know she lives in Stone Mountain? Yeah. The Candace that I know lives in Georgetown and Myrtle Beach. This one made a move. Yeah. But he was talking to her last summer, too. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I know he's got an ex named Candace and then a girl from home who she used to kick it with named Candace. Mm -hmm. None of these girls I've ever met. Okay. Um, so, what do you say about the whole him saying you didn't have been in a relationship? I know I just asked you that, but why would he just come up with that and I, say that? I have no idea. Okay. I have no idea. Yes, we were close. Like mm -hmm. I said, very, very close. Um... And since George has died, it's, we've come a little closer, but I think it's more so because he has, I guess, and I mean, my boys really look up to him because my kids, we don't have any family. Mm -hmm. They don't have any uncles. George has one brother that they met for the first time when George died. So they don't have any male figures, so they really look up to him. So mm -hmm. now they call him Uncle Tim. Um, my middle son even said to me, and I think I had a text message on my phone a few weeks ago, Mm -hmm. that he kind of looks up to Tim almost like a dad figure because we don't have any men in our life, mm -hmm. you know? Um, in his phone, you were, he had you saved in his phone as a big sis. You knew by that, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is your phone from your phone. Why, do you, why is he saved under a Sonya under your phone, both of his phones? That's just what I put under his sister. His older sister named Sonya. Well, why so, would you do that, though? Unless you, I mean, I that, mean that looks like you're trying to cover up him being in your phone like you didn't want George or somebody. Oh, no, that's, I mean, there's quite a few people in my phone that I don't have another actual name. Okay. Um, so one of the things that, you know, like I told him is that when we took his phones, we could get everything that was done, okay? Mm -hmm. So obviously, um, I was able to retrieve everything that was off of his phone, okay? And so I have all of these emails that you sent him talking about yours and his sexual relationship. You remember those? Yes. Okay. So th this is where we're at, Tia. Okay, I want you to listen to me. Mm -hmm. I know what's been going on. I know Tim's involvement. I also know there's a lot more that's been going on here, okay? What I want from you now is to understand all of this because what it looks like is you're this hateful, horrible spouse that connived with your live-in boyfriend to kill your husband for money. If that's how it is, then that's fine. You can tell me that. But if that's not what happened, then this is your only chance to tell me what was really going on. That's not what happened. Then tell me what's, this is your only chance to tell me what's really going on. Because everything else looks really bad. And I'm telling you right now, if you put all of this in front of a jury without your explanation of it, they're gonna, that's exactly what they're going to think. I did not have anything to do with George's death. Okay. And definitely no, nothing dealing with him, wanting him dead for money. Nothing. At all. Okay. So you're willing to let all of that stand in front of a jury? Yes, as far as having anything to do with his death, yes, I am. I am, because I know I did. I had nothing to do with it, nothing. Okay, but you've had you've been having a relationship with Tim. What has he said to you? He hasn't never said anything about wanting to hurt George ever or taking over the business. That's why I'm sitting here like, this is new to me. He's never said he wanted to take over Metro Atlanta Security. Mm -hmm. He's never told me he wanted George dead. He never said he was going to try to hurt George. Mm -hmm. Never, not once. All right. So George got home at 11.23, okay? And he had just gotten off the phone. And when he got off the phone, he came inside or came to open the door. Um, and that's when people remember hearing the shots around that same time too, okay? Mm -hmm. The 911 call was not placed till 10 minutes later when you guys called. Now, in that time, I've gone over the store with you multiple times and you've told me that he went, he opened the door, he saw it was George and all of that. So I can tell you that when I go back and listen to the 911 call, mm -hmm. that it is absolutely 100% completely staged. You, the things you told the dispatcher, you had already done and already said. No, I haven't. No, I, I haven't and I wasn't. Why not? Because he told me to call 911 and that's exactly what I did and everything the lady asked me. And while me, you're on the phone with her, he says, oh, there's somebody got shot. And then he says, 
oh, can you send an ambulance? My brother now says it's my husband that was hit. But you already knew that. I did. When I made the call, when he told me to call 911, the lady asked me, I mm -hmm. said, I heard some shots. Mm -hmm. um, she asked me, I believe she asked me, um, do, I don't know, I think she might have asked me, did I know who it is or whatever. I don't remember. I don't remember all the details. But what I'm saying is, when I when I called, it was not staged. I called as mm -hmm. soon as I heard the shots, went and found Tim. Well, what I thought at first was firecrackers. I wasn't sure what it was. Okay. Um, and went and found Tim. And he checked and told me whatever the time frame was to call number one. That's what I did. Okay. Nothing went, I did not stage the conversation or any of that. Okay. Well, talk to me about this then. How did this happen? How did you guys enter into this relationship while he's living into the house, living in the house behind George? Um, it, I don't remember when it. I don't. I don't remember exactly when it started. I think it was around the time that um that I thought George was messing with the girl Mariah. Mm -hmm. Um, I never had any real proof. I saw something on his tablet at one point. Um, and I questioned him about it. He denied it. He said, you know, he was not sleeping with her. She was just a secretary for him and Rob. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't have anything to worry about. But I just, to me, I felt like it was more to it than that. Okay. So. You were pursuing this relationship because even in your emails, it sounds like Tim was trying to cut it off and you you were the one that was continuously talking to him and continuing it, right? Uh, I was heard about it, yeah, because I found out he was, you know, he had told me he wasn't talking to Zena anymore. Mm -hmm. He wasn't messing with, you know, anyone, anybody else anymore. Just kind of got caught in some lies and I questioned him about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know... These messages were in that phone, okay, the day that we went to go do the search warrant when you called Kim and told her to go get the phone. Is this what you were worried that we were going to find? To be honest, yes. Well, that's what I want is honesty, To be Jane. honest, yes, I was. Okay, because this looks really bad. To be honest, yes, I was very afraid of okay. that part, yes. And you've been in this house and you've been living with him and whether or not you guys are in a relationship, I don't know because I'm not in there anymore, but that's what it looks like. And I know that he's not just living in this house and nothing has been said. So if you know something, I need you to explain it to me and help me because he's going to implicate you and he can take you down with him. Okay. I'm and I don't think you want that. So no, that's why no. I'm telling you, what do you know? What has he said? What is going on? Nothing as far as the murder of Mr. Smith. Nothing. I don't know that Tim had anything to do with it. He has not opened up, confessed nothing to me. Um, like I said, we discussed the track, I think once, and that was the night after we left here mm -hmm. when you told me that. Somebody said they saw him getting it before they helped George or whatever, whatever it was. Um, but as far as the case, we don't even discuss it. Like, mm -hmm. I just, there's very few times during the week that that we even bring it up. It's, I don't even like talking about it to my mom. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to move on as far as, as far as me and my youngest child, my older two are doing fine. My youngest one is not. Um, so as far as the case, I don't even talk to him much about the case. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, let me just go over some of the issues because I got to understand what's going on, okay? The white SUV thing that you guys have talked about, I asked Rob about it. I've asked a bunch of other people about it. Nobody else knew that but you and him. See, that's information that's sending me down, we'll say, a wrong trail that was only coming from you and him. So that makes it look like you guys are in something together, okay? Every time that I've talked to you, it's kind of been a different story about what happened that night. And I understand it can be traumatic, but when things like this happen, people don't forget those kinds of things. So that also makes it look like, because what he told me where he saw you that night and what happened was not true. And what you told me that you saw him, it was always different. I, I just don't understand that. Okay. Um, obviously him going out and getting a tracker and that kind of stuff, it's just not right. The fact that he had a million dollar life insurance policy and you called the next day. Um, you, one point you told me that you went to wake up your mom and you were on the catwalk with her and... No, she was never asleep. I don't, I never... Well, okay, not a way. You went to go get your mom and you brought her on the catwalk with you. One time you said you stood out there, you talked to her. That's what I can hear on the 911 call. The time before that, you said you took her into your bedroom and put her in the closet so she wouldn't wake up your kids. When well, she started having a breakdown, yeah, I took her okay. in the closet. She told me that didn't happen. She told you what? Did she never She told me she never went into your room and went into the closet. This whole gun running thing, okay, I looked into it. You gave me a totally different story than he did. You said it was some Cuban guy named Carlos. He said it was Terrence Bannerman, the pudding guy that you grew up with. I found Terrence. I know that I know that stuff's not true. The Carlos yeah, the Carlos okay, guy is But true. why would you tell me Carlos and he brings up something those are not even related at all? 
I have no idea. I, the only thing I can tell you is about the Hispanic looking guy that came to the house looking for him. And when I, I didn't call George right away, I didn't even text him. I waited till he got home that night and I t- told him about the guy coming by. Mm-hmm. George's eyes got real big. He looked at me and I asked him, what in the world is this about? Don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. It's somebody I got some financial help from. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it. And then I said, George, you need to tell me because this guy said he means business. Is this something when, I mean, is, are you into something that would jeopardize, jeopardize us? Your, I mean, what, what's going on? And he just said something to the fact, um, he said, I'm just running running weapons or delivering weapons or something like that. He said, but you don't need to worry about it. And so then every time after that, when I asked you, is there any reason anybody would want to hurt him, you never mentioned it until we brought it up to you. Yeah, that night when he was killed, I didn't think of it. I'm Why thinking, would you not think about somebody coming to your house, asking for money, looking for your husband, talking about running guns? But it was two or three months before that. I didn't think of it at all. Okay. Um, how come the, most of the messages and phone calls from you and Tim are deleted in your phone, but they're all in his? I mean, we just talking about the phones you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would delete them. I would periodically delete them. Okay. There's uh, there's even a coworker, another coworker that I talked to that I period would delete the calls from. All right. And that night you gave your middle son to Unison, correct? Uh, yeah. But I okay. give him. I mean, he gets that a couple times in. Yeah, well, he had before, but when we spoke to him, he said he hadn't gotten it in a long time, and that was the very first night he'd gotten it in a long time, in over a month. Yeah, it probably been a couple of weeks, I guess. You see what I'm saying, though? That night, the night that he normally goes out in the middle of the night between 9 and midnight is the night your husband comes home at 11 p.m. and gets killed. It makes it look like you gave it to him so that he wouldn't wake up during that time period. And it's also weird that we're there, the ambulance comes, the police come, we walked in their rooms and went everywhere, and none of them woke up in any of that. And I, But I asked. Me and my mom both asked everybody that came in the house. My mom, she was the first one that started asking, please be quiet. My mm-hmm. grandchildren are asleep. My, my daughter doesn't want the kids to wake up. I know, but the but I didn't get everybody nuts. coming in and out, and they never, none of them ever woke up. But And I, that's the first time he got that pill? You see what I mean? That, it's not the first time he had had it. That's what I'm saying. In a while. It had been a couple of weeks. Yeah. But I don't give it to the oldest one, and I don't give it to the baby. Well, I've had to start giving it to the youngest one now to, to be able to get some sleep. Mm-hmm. Either Benadryl, I'll give him to call, uh, Benadryl, or either a Unisom. He doesn't get it every night, but he can't sleep since George died. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my middle son is the only one that will walk and pace the house two or three o'clock in the morning and then don't want to get up for school the next day. Mm-hmm. My oldest one, I, mean, I don't think I've ever had to give him anything for sleep, but he slept mm-hmm. through everything because we were quiet. We asked the police, would they be quiet as much as possible? When some guy came around, he had to take pictures of the rooms. I asked him, was there any way he could not go in that room where the boys? But why was that your concern? Even on the 911 call, you tell them, don't come lights and siren. Your husband is laying out on the front porch dying, and you're worried about the kids waking up? I didn't want my kids to see my husband bleeding to death on the front porch, Mr. Smith. I understand that to an extent, but I just think you would be worried about him and not, I mean, your kids well, would find out. I wanted her to send help, but I didn't want her to just, if my kids had saw their dad laying in the front doors dead, I didn't want them to have that picture in their mind. Mm-hmm. I feel like any mom would have that, just like my mom did it for me. When my dad committed suicide in 07, I was upstairs asleep. He hung himself in the basement. Mm-hmm. She let me sleep upstairs and did not wake me up until he, she was hoping he would be removed from the basement before they woke me up. But I ended up waking up on my own because of the commotion. Mm-hmm. But that's the same thing my mom did for me. And I was a grown woman, but she didn't want me to wake up and see my dad hanging in the basement. And I was in my 30s when he died. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you got. It doesn't look good. And I'm telling you right now that I have no reason to lie to you because I have all this information to go in there that I went in there and talked to him. And I just went in there with him. I didn't go in, come in here and sit down and talk to him like I did you. I went in there and laid all of this out in front of him. And that's what he told me. Well, I don't know why he did So why would you do that? I don't know. I guess if I guess if he feels like he's going down, maybe he's just gonna take try to take me with him. I don't know. I would never him picture I would never imagine him doing that, but that's the only thing I can figure. Because he's never said one thing about one matter of fact, it's hard for me to believe Tim even said that. I'm not calling you a liar, but mm-hmm. what I'm saying is he knew just like Rob knows, the only people who didn't know was George's family. That when George died, this company died. When he died, his alarm license dies with it. Nobody can run Metro Atlanta Security once George dies. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because Ivy thought that was her big thing. Me and my brothers and sisters, we're going to keep the business going. I said, you can't. Mm -hmm. When your brother passed away, his his, he he said that years ago. That's why he wanted Tim, hopefully, that Tim and David would one day maybe get their license. 
So they can help run, you know, they can equally run the company. But when George died, the company died. We all knew that. So it's like, that's what I'm saying. How would I, it's hard for me to believe he would say that well, he, he wanted to take over because, the business. Oh, he said it. Trust me. Um, and then right here, he's talking to David. The day before he bought the tracker, he says, we, uh, David says, we need to get a spot. And Tim says, you think? And then Tim says, I got to end this mess first. And then David says, yep, you definitely do. And then the very next day, he buys the tracker. Well, I know that I know that he even knows the company can't be ran because neither one of them have an alarm license. Okay, but what about the million dollar life insurance policy and you guys being in a relationship, all of that stuff together? Mr. Smith, <clears throat> I don't never get the million. I could care less. And I voice that to my mom, my aunts. George's mom can tell you. Mm -hmm. She can tell you. I've been saying it for the past two or three months. Because she's worried about it. When are you going to get paid? What are you going to do with the kid? How are you going to... I said, Margie, I'm to the point I don't get it if I don't ever get the money. I'm just tired of all the stress. I just want to move on. This grief, dealing with BJ, dealing with all the things I'm dealing with. I don't give two shits about the money if I don't ever get it. I know how to work. That's what I've been doing the past two or three years. Working fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 of overtime a year. Mm -hmm. I know how to work. So if I don't get it, it's fine. That's why if you call me to my mom, they can tell you I ain't called in months. Mm -hmm. I don't care anymore. So the money is not an issue for me. I mean, yes, I need money, and we all do need money to live. But if I don't ever get it, that's fine. Matter of fact, I even have uh, the courts gave me. Um, I got his probate, uh, whatever you call it, executive estate mm -hmm. paperwork. Uh, I think it was like January twenty fifth, maybe. Um, I've only been to one bank to, to see if there was money in it, and that was Regents. And I knew that's where his paycheck went, his last paycheck went. Mm -hmm. But well, I think he has a Wells Fargo account. I think he has a Bank of America account. I haven't been to any of them banks with the statements to try to see what's in them, to see if I could get it. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Even my mom keeps saying, Tia, with the way money is tied around here, why don't you go to those banks and see what he has? It might be something to help this household. Mm -hmm. I still haven't been. <clears throat> So money, that's what I'm saying, to make this out like I'm doing it for money. Or it was, it does for I'm money. Not, I'm not, I'm telling you that's what it looks like and that's what he's telling me. Well, that's, that's some bull. I can tell you that. That's some bull. Yes, I will admit, and I, I apologize for lying. I am very embarrassed about this. I really am. Mm -hmm. um, I am. And you guys are still in a lying. relationship now. Yes, to be honest, yes. I'm just going to be honest. Well, yes. that's what I want. Because listen... Tia, I'm telling you this is how it looks, and I keep telling you this. He's going to try to take you down with him. And I'm telling you, when he gets up there and he starts talking about everything and what you did and what you did, and you don't have anything to counter that, and you don't have a way to say, no, that's BS because this is actually what happened, or this is what he told me, or this is, that's right there is going to be a huge issue. You see what I'm saying? Are you ready to go to jail today for this? No, 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 because I know I have. I'm guilty of this, then and this is me. wrong. Then tell this me, is there's no way he's been living under your roof and you've been in a relationship and you don't know that something was I, happening. As far as, this, you talking about hurting George or having yes. a sexual, no, that part I don't. Tia, that part I no don't. Way. That part I don't. The sex part, the affair, I'm very, very embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how embarrassed I am. I really am. I'm sorry that so I never told you. So much did you continue it past your husband dying? Um, the first two months we did, it started back up around the first of March. The first couple of months we did, we called it up, we just stopped because I'm going to tell you the truth, I was afraid that my boys would end up picking up on something that's wrong mm -hmm. or catching, you know, catching us kissing or something. So we both said the boys have been through enough and I didn't want to chance them seeing anything inappropriate to send them off because I'm sure it would hurt them deeply that I'm talking to Tim and daddy's just not too long ago died. So I think it might have been like the middle of February or 1st of March. When we kind of gotten talk, you know, kind of get romantic again, but up until then, no. Okay. So you don't you don't know anything about nothing it. about the crime. I do not know nothing. Why do you think if he loves you and he's been in a relationship with you and you guys have had this ongoing relationship and he has stayed with you through all of this that he is so easily going to bring you in you into this know. with him? I'm I don't know. I don't know, Mr. Smith. I don't know. I don't know why he's saying that I knew he wanted to take over the business, um, that I did it for money, that I know he did, had anything to. I don't know. I do not know. I'm sitting here just. I, I don't know, because I know nothing about it. Nothing. 
All I know is what happened that night. That's all I know. And then when I came here the 18th and y'all talked to me. That's mm-hmm. all I know. But the problem is, is that I'm talking about all these tracker things and things too. And I'm telling you, George didn't know anything about that. There's nothing the to show that he knows that, about it. The only part I don't get is I know George came to me talking about the tracker. When when the white, in, I think it was a white Infinity SUV, mm-hmm. those couple of encounters he had with that. Then when I told him about the, the Carlos guy, it was, I don't know if it was days. I can't say if it was days. But don't you I don't think remember. he would have went to someone who could have helped him like Rob or Antoine or somebody else that knows something? about security that knows that why would he only tell you and Tim? No one else knew anything about that. The only I don't know. Just like it doesn't make sense to me that Rob didn't know Tim stayed there. That mm-hmm. still goes my mind. That's a question I wish I could ask George. Mm-hmm. I had like I said, I did not know th- so to me George did certain things for certain reasons. Why he didn't tell Rob that Tim lived there and Rob even knew Tim. They worked on sites together. Mm-hmm. And that's what Rob kept saying, T, we work together. Why wouldn't Cuz tell me? I don't know. Ivy was upset because Ivy, he was closer to Ivy than anybody, closer than his mama. And for Ivy not to know blew my mind. I didn't know she didn't know. So what I'm saying is there are reasons. I don't know what George, why George had certain reasons that he told this person this, but didn't tell this one that. Now he's got a friend named Matt Hoover that lives in Decula. Mm-hmm. They've been friends for probably 10 years. Matt told me maybe a week after George died, because I was telling him about how George's family is so pissed mm-hmm. that Tim lived there. They didn't know blah, blah, blah. And Matt sat there and he said, I knew it. And I said, you knew what? He said, I knew Tim lived there. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, when did he tell you? He said, three days after Tim moved in. You can call. I can give you Matt's number now. And I, I said, so George told you that you knew Tim has been here since he got, he said, since the week he moved in, I knew he lived there. He said, but I never said a word to Trina. His wife didn't even know. He didn't tell Trina. Trina is his wife, and I'm close to Trina. And as he's telling me, Trina looked over and said, Matt, you never told me. He said, I guess, he said, it's nobody's business. But Pete, Pete Myers is another close friend of George. Pete didn't know. But he told so Matt, so I don't know, understand. If you didn't know anything about it and Tim did it, then who would who would Tim have gotten to do it if he wasn't going to do it himself if he was in the house with you? I don't know. The only friend I know that Tim has that he's close to is David. That's the only name I ever hear him talk about is David. That's it. And I know they've been best friends. I don't know how far back it goes. I think it goes back to Walmart days when he was a manager at Walmart. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never really heard him you know, talking about any other guys other than David. So, but again, like I said, all these things, the 911, the, the different stories every time, you only you guys know the issue being the life insurance policy, him going out to his car, you guys being in a relationship, all of this other stuff, the trackers, these things like that, that I can show and prove the things that he's done. And I know that you guys are in a relationship because you both admitted to it. Um, and then, you know, the only time that your son had gotten the unison was in the middle of that night. I'm telling you, that's how it looks. That is how all of this looks. And I'm okay. telling you that that's how a jury would see it. Okay, but Ms. Smith, not being a smart ass, if I was going to give, why would I just give the middle one unison? I didn't give my oldest one unison. I didn't give the baby boy unison. Well, I don't know he, that you didn't. I mean, did you? No, I didn't. You can ask them. I'm sure y'all well, probably asked the boys that the day. One because he's the only one that got up in those hours that George was coming home that night. You see mm-hmm. what I mean? No, both of my oldest two stay up late. Just the middle one stays up to two and three, mm-hmm. pacing the house, going in my mom's room, talking. But the older two, both of them stay up late. It's even, even my oldest one. There's nothing for him to be up to 12, 1 o'clock. The, the middle one is the only one I think has insomnia that roams around the house to 2 and 3. And you and remember one. George talking about that week of the murder that he was going to fix the cameras and him and Donald were going to fix the cameras outside? Not that week. The boys <clears> told me that. Okay. I didn't. I wasn't present. I didn't know nothing about. You see how that kind of put a, a, a timeline on it, but it had to be moved up because if they waited happened? another week for George to be killed, then the cameras would have been working. So the person that did it knew that they knew the cameras were going to be working soon, and they had to do it then. Oh, I see what you're saying. I didn't couldn't follow what you were mm-hmm. saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but I didn't get what you were saying. Like I said, I didn't know nothing about the conversation until the boys told me after. I think when the news ran a few days or something. And the boy said um, that their dad had talked to him about training. I think he was going to let my oldest one watch him do the cameras or whatever because he would take him in the summer. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, 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 I just found out not too long ago, the dad on uh, the neighbor across the street told me that the cameras at the pool, at the, what you call them, house was open. So she said it was something with the computer that powers the cameras was down. But, I mean, I know I didn't have nothing to do with that either. 
But I mean, I'm sure that looked suspicious if the cameras at the pool house aren't working. I ain't have nothing to do with that. I don't I think he had nothing. I'm just saying all the stuff that I've I mean, explained to you. You see how that all adds up? I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So that's why I was hoping that you had an explanation. I don't have no explanation as far as the murder. No, I have no explanation for <clears> that. None. And if, like I said, I can give you a list of people you can call before I even have access to my phone. They will tell you Kim Drayton, um, Candace Hoover, Trina. I can name four or five that I've told over the past few months. I don't if I'll ever get the money. It ain't about, and a lot of them don't know how much it is, but they know I have a life insurance policy. And I told them, I just want this stress to be over. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of the stress. The money, I could care less. And like I said, my mom will tell you right now, she's pissed because I won't go to Wells Fargo and Bank of America to see what money's in there and take it out. Because she said, Tia, we need it to live. Mm -hmm. I told her I don't want to deal with money. When I get depressed, I deal with depression anyway. <clears throat> Does your mom know about the relationship? No. Between you and Tim? No, she doesn't. Does anybody else know? Um, In the house, no. No. What about outside the house? Uh, one girlfriend of mine named Candace Hoover. Not the Candace he mm -hmm. used to date. A different Candace. She doesn't know all the details, but she knows um, that we that we had something going last year. I'm telling you, he's going to take you down in a ball of fire with her. Well, he'll be doing it with a bunch of lies. Because I had the, sex, the sexual relationship, I will admit. I'm embarrassed to stand before a jury to admit it, but if I have to, I have to. I mean, it's, it happened. I lied about it, and I'm... I'm I'm sorry. I mean, it was embarrassing that I did. But as far as the murder, I ain't got shit to do with it. Don't know nothing about it. Had nothing to do with it. Nothing. I know nothing about it. Nothing. And you never suspected him in all of this? Ever? No, not until y'all brought up the, 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 the night you had to come in on the 18th and y'all kept saying he took the tracker off that night. Like I said, I wasn't quite aware that it was before the CPR. Mm -hmm. And I think until y'all... I think y'all told me. I think that. it was all, that's what I'm telling you. It was all done before I think you even knew her came downstairs, if that's what happened. I don't understand. Like, was his weapon used in it? Maybe. That's why I want to know. I have no idea. Because I don't want him to take you down with him and make you out to be this horrible monster if there's something that you know and you're no. just wanting to protect him. No. This is not there's the nothing. time. Nope. There's nothing. The only thing, like I said, that I have to admit now to the world, I guess, is the affair. Well, I, I, mean, just, I just want you, to, I don't want you to protect him. I'm not protecting him. I, I have to own what, the things that I'm guilty of, I will own it at this point. The affair, I'm very embarrassed and I know my mom and my children would be very hurt by it, but if it has to come out, it has to come out. But anything beyond a, a freaking affair, that's it. That's the only thing I'm guilty of, is having an affair. Yes, and I'm not, I'm not like, belittling it like it's nothing. I know that's a big thing. So I'm not saying it like, oh, that's all I did, but that is the only damn thing I'm guilty of, is that. That is it. And is it wrong? Is it dirty? Is it treacherous? Yes. But I will own it. Just, that is what happened. Okay. And if I need to, I mean, you have to tell me. Do I need to go ahead and tell my children that, about the affair? I'm not, I don't tell your children. That's not my job. I don't tell people that. Okay. I didn't know whether I needed to go ahead and go ahead no, and tell them. No, I don't. Them. I don't. Now, tell will you be that. telling, I know you. It's, I mean, it's up to you whether you tell me or not. Will you be telling his mom and his sisters about it? About the affair? Yes. I don't discuss those types of things. If, if he was charged or somebody's charged, him, then I will tell him, hey, so and so has been charged in the murder, but I'm not going to go. Okay, because I prefer if you're going to tell him, I'd rather tell him first. Okay. That's the one I'm asking. All right. Well, let me go talk to him again, okay? Yeah. Is there anything else you need right now? Mm, no, but I'm going to have to, my son needs to get to practice at 5 Okay. All right. Hey, Tina. Hey. All right, listen. I went and talked to, talked to Tim some more, okay? Um, obviously his story's not changing, okay? He's implicating you and he's bringing you into this and all that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so unfortunately you are going to have to go to jail tonight, okay? Okay. Alright? Alright. Can I call my mom? Um, well, let me ask them to see what they want to do and I'll let you know right quick, okay? Alright. Just wait right here for a second. Okay. All right, Tina, if you could stand up for me, please. Okay. Turn and face the wall. Uh, if you want to take off your visitor pass. You don't have anything in your pockets, do you? No. Your keys. Okay. Where's your cell phone? 
the same card. In the card, okay. Yeah. If you want to just put your hands on, on the wall, that's fine. I don't know much about what's going on, okay, but I know if you have anything on you mm-hmm. that could be deemed a weapon or anything like that, yes. um, you could get in more trouble. Okay, you don't have anything on you. Not even like a dime bag weed or nothing like that. <laughs> okay. Separate your feet for me. Okay. Um, okay. Do you want to put your hands behind your back? Open your hands. Yeah. I will get you a bag. Um, and put all your property in it. What did you say name was man? Tia. Tia. It's a short ride. Right? Mm-hmm. Stand by just a second. You're in the bag. Yep. I'm just going to turn around on this so that it feels like it's in the morning. Well, it's in North Carolina. Do you know the first six numbers of your social security? Um, phone's in the car. Uh, your vehicle, who would you feel comfortable with us releasing that to? My mom. Your mom. What's your name again? Linda. Linda. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. And you're cool with that? Yeah. Okay. Detective York, or Corporal York, excuse me, he's my partner. Corporal York, you're clear that Banks, right? Mm-hmm. Just so we have a verbal acknowledgement that that's who we can release your car to. Okay. okay? She good to go now? Yep. Okay. Is this your water? Yes. I'm going to fill up my trash can right there. Okay. You want to sit before you go? No. Okay. Tier Young was convicted of felony murder, aggravated assault, and criminal attempt to tamper with evidence. She was sentenced to life in prison. Harvey Tim Lee was convicted of malice murder, felony murder, and aggravated assault. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole.